Hi everyone, it's Mr. Hamilton here. This video is about exploring graphs of rational functions. We're going to define what holes and asymptotes are, and then look at the equations and determine what about the equations causes holes and what causes asymptotes. This follows from Explore the Math in section 2.5 in Nelson's Functions 11 for Ontario. You can see the investigation questions in the link below. So what is a hole? A hole is a point on the graph where the function does not exist. You can see on the graph below that there's this hole right here at 2 and at 4. There's no y value that corresponds to an x value of 2. Now the problem is since the function does not exist on both sides of the hole, you can't see this on the graph no matter how far you zoom in on it. I've used a program called Desmos when, when I highlight and put my mouse over that point it shows two undefined, but if I don't highlight it with my cursor, then what happens is it doesn't show at all. Let me show you what I mean. So here I have the line y equals x plus two. You can see it's x plus two because the y-intercept is two and the slope is one. It's going over one, up one. And so this though has a hole in it. And so if I hold my cursor down and I go along the line, it'll show me the point that I'm on, but I'm left clicking my cursor and I'm scrolling along with my cursor. And then you can see right at two, at the x value of 2, we see that it's undefined. But the problem is if I zoom in on that point right there, regardless of how much I zoom in, I can never actually see that it's undefined. It continues to exist at 2.0000000001 right there on that side of it, and at negative or at positive 1.9999999999 there on the left side of it. So it's never going to show a hole unless I take my cursor and put it right over it, and then I can see that it's at 2 and undefined. Now, an asymptote is a straight line that the graph gets closer and closer to, but never touches or crosses. What we have here in the black line, that is the actual graph. The other two lines are vertical lines that I've drawn and added so that you can see it more clearly, and they're labeled with the arrows there that points to them. Now, you'll notice that you have to, to be able to see it nice and clearly. It's useful often to draw the line in, and so I graphed x equals negative 1 and x equals 2, and then I went into the settings and I changed it so that they were dotted lines. Let me show you quickly how to do that. So there, if you look at the top left, you see the function I've graphed, and you see the line x equals negative 1 and x equals 2. And you can see they're not dotted lines, but they are vertical lines there. And uh, just a quick note here, if you go to the cogwheel, and then you click on the little circle beside with the color for each line, what you can do is you can make that line a dotted line, and you can do the same thing with the next one. And then click Done, and now you have those two as dotted lines, and you see those as asymptotes that the black curve, that's the actual function, gets closer and closer to. Uh, on one end, it goes seems to go up to infinity here, then it goes down to negative infinity here, negative infinity here, and then up to positive infinity up here. It's going to get closer and closer to, but it's never going to touch. And one of the reasons we know that is because as we zoom in, you can see that that gap is always existing as far up as you can go. If you continue to zoom in, that gap is always going to be there. So with those definitions and those basic workings established, let's have a look at the Explore the Math. Part A says this, some rational functions simplify to polynomials. So for example, f of x equals x squared minus four over x minus two. We're gonna start by graphing that here. So we're gonna write f of x equals x squared. So you're gonna write an x and then you're gonna write shift six. That's a little hat, that's the exponent. x squared minus four. Now here's where some people might make mistakes. They then go divide by x minus two. That doesn't look like in step A. So what they need to do is they need to go back and you need to go x minus 4 and you need to put that in brackets, x squared minus 4 in brackets, and then go to the end and go divided by, divided by, uh, that's with your question mark on your keyboard, x minus 2. Now it doesn't matter if those uh, the brackets stay there or not, that still works, but we could get rid of them at this point. But now that looks correct. So if you run into that, just add brackets and that'll make sure it goes in the right place. Now what you notice here is if you go along the line, just like we said before, you're going to find a hole at x equals 2, if it'll let me go on to that point. So there, 2 is undefined. There's a hole right there. Now it also notes in step A that that's the same thing as we can't use f of x again. It doesn't like that if we do that. So we're going to use g of x. It does the same thing as x plus 2, x plus 2 times x minus 2 divided by x minus 2. And so you can see that that's the same line. And as we go over, if I if I want to see one line by itself, I just unclick the circle in front of the function I'm not trying to look at. And now I'm just focused on that second function. As if I go along that, 
If I hold my cursor down, I can see there's the hole right there. Same function. And the reason for that is because it is a difference of squares. And so x squared minus 4 becomes x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now it becomes a little more clear for us to see the x minus 2s cancel out. And that leaves us with a hole at 2. So remember that as we move on to the next step. So this is the same thing it said if we were to graph h of x as well in that step a as x uh, equals, equals x plus 2. Right? Those are all the same graph. And then uh, with the restriction, if we just look at x plus 2, that's going to be allowed to be equal something at 2. At 2, it's going to be 4. But if it had the restriction that x could not be 2, then it would have the exact same restrictions and therefore be the same function. So now part B says, determine another rational function that simplifies to a polynomial with domain x as a set of all real numbers such that x could not be equal to 1. Describe what happens to the graph at x equals 1. So here's one example of what I've done here. x squared minus 1, that's going to become x plus 1 times x minus 1. And then that x minus 1 would cancel out with the bottom leaving us with just x plus 1. So this is the same function if I was to graph it as x plus 1. You can see those two overlap each other, but x plus 1 is not going to have a restriction, but the f of x is going to have a restriction. That's going to be right at 1. So right there, there's a hole, 1 and undefined. We didn't have to put a difference of squares on the top, though. What we could have done is just put something that when we cancel out the numerator and denominator factor, cancels out that x minus 1. And so this would have simplified to x plus 3. The x minus 1s would cancel. And you see here, we just have uh, a line with the same slope because it's still going to be an x is going to be the slope of 1, but it's now going to be a plus 3. And so if we go to the point where x equals 1, we can see here, if it lets me scroll over it, there you go, that it's undefined at that point. So the whole key here is that there has to be a factor of x minus 1 in the numerator and denominator that cancels out. Now part C says some rational functions cannot be simplified. For example, g of x equals 1 over x minus 3. Graph g of x and zoom in near x equals 3. Describe what happens to the graph near x equals 3. Well, it's really hard to see here, but you can kind of see it's approaching uh, the 3 value above and it's approaching the 3 value below. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to expect that's an asymptote. So I'm going to graph x equals 3. And then I'm going to just go to my cog wheel and change the color of that, just so it's not the same color. And I'm going to change that as a dotted line because I expect that to be a asymptote. And there I've just clicked done. And what you can see now is you can see that that is an asymptote. So as I go up here, as I zoom in, there's always a gap. And then as I go down to the bottom as well, and I zo zoom in as far down as I want to go, uh, there's always going to be a gap as well. And so that's an asymptote that that's forming. So if I have that x minus 3 or any x minus something or plus something in the denominator, that's going to give us an asymptote. So now we look at part D. Determine another rational function with domain x is a set of all real numbers such that x cannot equal 2 that can't be simplified. Graph your function and describe what happens to the graph at x equals 2. So instead of graphing 1 over x minus 3, I'm graphing 1 over x minus 2. And you can see there there's an asymptote at x equals 2. So again, that X, that factor of x stays in the denominator, and we get a asymptote. Specifically, it's a vertical asymptote. So then it shouldn't be a huge jump to go to part E, where it says to find a function, a simplified rational function, that has two vertical asymptotes, x equals negative 1 and x equals 2. So the whole idea here is that if we wanted a positive asymptote, we wrote x minus that positive number. If we wanted a negative asymptote, it's going to be x plus that number. And so it's just the opposite sign of the sign that the asymptote is. So if it's a negative 1, we're going to write x plus 1. And the asymptote for b positive 2 is x minus 2. And there you go. That's exactly the simplified rational function that we can write for part e. f says determine the equation of a rational function that has both a vertical asymptote and a whole. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this. We're going to simplify this back to what we had, the x minus 2. And now we want it to also have a whole. So the easiest way to do that would maybe just be add, uh, let's go x minus 1. And we want it to cancel out off the numerator and denominator. So I'm going to have an x minus 1 in the denominator. And so you can see here that we're going to have an asymptote at x equals 2, just as we did before. 
But then at x equals 1, let's see if we can determine x equals 1 right there. So let's see, is that going to be a whole right at 1? Sure enough, it is. 1 and undefined. So there you go. We've graphed the function. Uh, that's one particular example. You could come up, there's an infinite number of possibilities. But the whole idea there is that the whole has to have a factor that cancels, and the asymptote, the vertical asymptote, has to stay in the denominator. So now part G says this. The rational function h of x equals 1 over x has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. As you can see right there, there's a horizontal asymptote and a vertical asymptote in this. Then it goes on to say, apply a transformation to h of x that will result in a rational function that has the horizontal asymptote y equals 2. In other words, the horizontal asymptote right now is y equals 0 right across there, and we want it to have an asymptote at y equals 2. In other words, we want all the y values to be moved up by 2. Any idea how we can do that? Well, if you thought we just add 2 to the function, you're absolutely right. We go 1 over x plus 2. There you go. It's been shifted up 2, just as any transformation would that we've done previously. Part H now says determine the equation of a rational function without any holes, vertical asymptotes, or horizontal asymptotes. Graph your function. So this should be relatively straightforward. If we graph the linear relationship, uh, that has none of the holes, vertical asymptote or horizontal asymptote. If I graph x squared, same thing. If I graph x cubed, the same thing. I'm going to go back to x squared for a moment because you might think it has a horizontal asymptote. But remember, an asymptote is a line that it approaches but never touches. A quadratic actually touches this y equals 0 line. So that does not have an asymptote. So those would work. Any x to any power would work. Perhaps uh, a more interesting thing might be something like this. Uh, the whole idea is I want nothing to cancel out, and I want to make sure that I have some factor on the bottom that doesn't give me real roots. And so I could actually graph this, x cubed over x squared plus 1. x squared minus 1 would give me factors of x plus 1 and x minus 1. But x squared plus 1, if you use a quadratic formula because it's unfactorable, you'll find that the roots actually don't work. In other words, it doesn't give you real roots, which you'll learn about later on in math. Uh, but for now, you can just know that that would produce something that would give you none of the function uh, none of the function holes vertical asymptotes or horizontal asymptotes all right last now is to summarize our findings so go ahead and use this example to just jog your memory and write what a good summary statement would be of holes and then check your answer with what i have i said a hole is formed when a factor cancels out of the numerator and denominator it's really that simple now try writing a summary statement for vertical asymptotes as well and then check your answer with me again so a vertical asymptote is formed when a factor of x stays in the denominator and does not cancel. That's the key for a vertical asymptote. We quickly just touched on a horizontal asymptote as well, so let's quickly write that as well. A horizontal asymptote is formed, do you remember how? By adding a value to the end. So it's formed by adding a value to the end. A separate number outside or to the fraction. So the last thing to keep in mind is simply this. If the value did not cancel out and it stayed in the numerator, there were no restrictions, no holes, and no asymptotes. For more on the algebra of rational functions, check out this video right here. Thanks for watching. If that was helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks.